Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, February 21st, 2017. For all Western New York news and radio, I'm Scott Leffler. High near 57 today with showers later this afternoon and an overnight low around 42. Wednesday will be partly sunny with a high near 56. What's in the news? Mayor Byron Brown will seek a fourth term as mayor of Buffalo, he announced Monday afternoon at a rally, flanked by Erie County Executive Mark Polenkars and Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. Brown will have to fend off opposition on his own side of the political aisle. City Comptroller Mark Schroeder is expected to announce his own bid for mayor in early March. Simonelli Real Estate Corporation is building 133 new single-family homes in Amherst on 87 acres on the east side of the site of Muir Woods, which is at the northwest corner of Amherst. Not all are pleased with the proposal. Judy Colton, who has waged a 17-year fight against developing Muir Woods, said she fears for those who will have to deal with increased traffic. Both Western New York area Jewish community centers on Delaware Avenue in Buffalo and North Forest Road in Amherst were evacuated late Monday morning following at least one bomb threat. Amherst Assistant Police Chief Charles Cohen said a bomb threat was called in around 11.15 a.m. The evacuated people were taken to the nearby Weinberg campus, but the all-clear alert was sounded sometime between 12.30 and 12.45 after the center was swept by a canine. 39-year-old Philip Vincent of Niagara Falls could go to prison for as much as five years after he pleaded guilty to possession with intent to distribute crack cocaine and possession of a weapon in furtherance of drug trafficking. Prosecutors say that U.S. Marshals encountered the defendant at his residence in Niagara Falls while looking for a fugitive in December of 2014. Officers searched Vincent's 20th Street residence and discovered a 38 caliber revolver along with marijuana plants and crack cocaine. Andre Jackson, age 29, of Buffalo, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute cocaine. The charge carries a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison. Prosecutors say that Jackson conspired to distribute crack cocaine in the city of Buffalo between June 2013 and July 2014. Jackson is one of 28 individuals arrested as part of the Shuley Boys investigation. To date, 21 of those 28 defendants have been convicted. Police News Four people were charged following an altercation at a Campbell Boulevard bar in Pendleton on Friday. According to New York State Police, troopers charged Justin T. Clock, age 30, of Amherst, and Joseph T. Marshall, age 24, of Lockport, with third-degree assault and second-degree harassment. Brian R. O'Connor, age 40, of Sanborn, with third-degree assault, and Nicole Marshall, age 43, of Cambria, with second-degree menacing and second-degree harassment, following a fight outside Brower's Restaurant. Troopers responded to a fight in progress and found that a male and female patron were attacked by the four suspects while outside the restaurant. The suspects were placed under arrest and taken to the Lockport Troopers barracks for processing. They were arraigned in the town of Pendleton Court and released on their own recognizance. 19-year-old Aaron Wysochansky of Lockport was charged Saturday with criminal possession of a controlled substance and criminal possession of marijuana following a transit road traffic stop. Troopers say Wysochansky was stopped for failing to yield the right of way when entering the roadway. Then they found him to be in possession of Alprazolam pills without a prescription and approximately 37 grams of marijuana. 27-year-old Bethany M. Conrad of Lockport was charged Sunday with petty larceny, accused of stealing from Walmart. According to state police, Conrad had exited the store without paying for a jacket and a purse. She was processed at the Lockport Troopers barracks and released on an appearance ticket returnable to town of Lockport Court at a later date. Armando Dominguez, age 29, of Mexico, was arrested and charged by criminal complaint with illegally re-entering the United States after a conviction for an aggravated felony. The charge carries a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison and a quarter million dollar fine. Prosecutors say he was taken into custody after a vehicle and traffic stop on Grand Island on Wednesday and admitted to being in the U.S. illegally. A federal grand jury has returned an indictment charging Michael Elder, age 36, of Tonawanda with possession with intent to distribute 28 grams or more of crack cocaine and fentanyl and maintaining a drug-involved premises. The charge carries a mandatory minimum sentence of five years in prison, a maximum of 40 years, and a $5 million fine. Prosecutors say that on November 3rd, officers recovered crack cocaine and fentanyl at Elder's Tonawanda home. The defendant was on parole for a previous federal conviction. If you missed my weekly show, here's the thing, last night on all Western New York radio, you can catch it on the podcast. Unfortunately, I had to end the show early because I was attacked by a large bird, the horror. Know what doesn't attack people? Fish fries. Also, they're awesome. But whose is the most awesome? Nominate your favorite today at allwesternnewyorkawards.com.
Also, be sure to catch Craig Bacon's latest book review and something special about Chris Collins from our friend, The Communist. Okay, that's the news. For all Western New York news and radio, I'm Scott Leffler. Have a great day. Don't miss Pop Evil, Thursday, February 23rd, 2017. The Rockers from Michigan will be performing at the iconic Rapids Theater on Main Street in Niagara Falls. Accompanied by special guests Rising Sun and Bad Flower, it's a show you don't want to miss. General admission tickets are just $22 in advance, $25 night of the show. Get them online at rapidstheater.com. That's Pop Evil, Thursday, February 23rd at Niagara Falls Rapids Theater. 